here we go write down the domain of g it is given by g of x is equals to 2 divided by x plus 1 plus 2 we're looking for the domain of this function so let's take a look this function is defined for all values of x this function is defined for all values of x except from x is equals to minus 1 why are we saying that it is not defined at x is equals to minus 1 because here on the denominator if x is equals to minus 1 we would have minus 1 plus 1 which is equals to 0 and we know fully well that we can't divide by 0 so that function is not defined at x is equals to minus 1 but everywhere else perfectly fine so that is 6.1 let's take a look at 6.2 so 6.2 rather than the equations of the asymptotes of g still we have g of x being equals to 2 divided by x plus 1 plus 2 we're looking for the asymptotes we have the asymptote from 6.1 right this right here is the asymptote is the value of x for which the function gets very close to but actually never touches so x is equals to minus 1 is an asymptote the function will get very close to x equals to minus 1 at x equals to minus 0 0.9999 the function is defined but as soon as we reach one it's no longer defined so asymptote that point that we really get very close to but we actually never touch right so x is close to minus one that is one asymptote okay so we have established that x is close to minus one is an asymptote but what is the other asymptote y is equals to two why do I say that y is equal to 2 is an asymptote? Because for g of x to be equal to 2, we would need this part to be 0. And that is essentially impossible. Right. For g of x to be equal to 2, we would need that part to be equal to 0. And that is impossible. There is no value of x there which you can substitute and we get 0. We can get very close to... Uh, zero this part can get very close to zero but it will actually never reach zero meaning that y will never be equal to two so these are our asymptotes x gives us the vertical asymptote and y is equal to two gives us the horizontal asymptote 6.2 let's take a look at 6.3 calculate the coordinates of point d a point of intersection of g and f okay we're given the two equations so it's just a matter of uh, equating them here and solving for x right so oh we have two points of intersection actually we have a and d so we're not just solving for x we would have two values of x i assume and we would have to pick one by taking a look at a few things okay let's go ahead and do that so we want a point of x where we want x when f of x is equal to g of x we're expecting two values of x obviously if you look at the function we have a and d there so f of x that is minus x plus 4 g of x is 2 divided by x plus 1 plus 2 let's take 2 to the left hand side if we do that we get minus x plus 4 minus 2 that is plus 2 being equals to 2 divided by x plus 1 right i'm putting <laughs> that uh in brackets so that i can cross multiply and uh, simplify uh, with a bit of clarity so if we cross multiply we're gonna get 2 uh, being equals to minus x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 1 there we go so minus x multiplied by x that will be minus x squared minus x multiplied by plus one that will be minus x and then plus two x plus two okay so if we take two to the right hand side we're gonna get zero being equals to minus x squared plus x minus x plus two x will give us plus x okay there we go so we're gonna have zero being equals to x squared minus x dividing both sides by minus one 
So if we take a common factor of x there, we're going to get x multiplied by x minus 1. Right. So x is equals to 0 or x is equals to 1. Should be easy to see that um, the x coordinate at a should be the one that is equals to 0. And then the x coordinate at d should be the one that is equals to 1. Right. Now that the, we have the x at d, we can substitute it at either f of x or g of x. The answer should be the same. So if we substitute these into f of x, I'm choosing f of x because it's sort of easy to digest, right? Minus x plus 4. So when d is equals to 1, we're going to have minus 1 plus 4. This gives us 3. And then the coordinates of d, we have 1 as the x value and 3 as the y value. There we go.